What's good? I'm going to show you how to use the Crazy Ninja Mike Sportsbook Devigor today. If you've seen any of my videos, you've probably seen me use this tool. It's my favorite tool. It's great if you really want to take your sports betting to the next level. And it's one of these things that looks kind of complicated but it's really not all that hard to use. Once you play around with it a little bit, you will catch on really quickly. First of all, why do we even need this tool? Why is this important? This is important because to be a winning sports gambler, you have to figure out the true odds of the bet that you're looking to bet on. If you can get better odds than the true odds of the event to happen, so let's say the true odds are like minus 110, you can get odds of plus 120, well then you know you have a great bet. That's really all that matters with sports gambling in the long run. Are you getting odds better than the true odds of the event to happen? figure out the true odds of the event to happen, we can use the sports books to sort of do that for us. And then this tool to figure out the true win percentage. And again, if we can get odds better than that, so if it's a 50, 50 bet, the fair odds are plus 100. If we can get odds of plus 110, plus 120, well, then we know we have a great bet. This tool can let us figure out what the sports books think the true odds of the event to happen actually are. It's called the Vigor because it takes the VIG out of the sports books odds, helps us figure out what they think the true odds are, and then we can use that to our advantage. And so that's why we use this tool. Of course, we can use it to calculate parlays and boosts and multi-way markets, and it can do a bunch of other stuff, especially on all these different tabs. But right now, I just wanna break down the basics. I promise you can follow along and understand this. It's not all that complicated. I want you guys to learn this in case I die in a car accident tomorrow and then I can't review the boost, then you can do it yourselves. Or just if I can't get to one occasionally, I still plan on making all of them for sure. Still gonna do the daily boosts and promos for sure. But if there's one that I can't get to late at night or something and you wanna review it yourself, you can do it now. All right, so first of all, we're just gonna hit show all here. We'll show all of the different DVIG methods. You don't really need to worry about the intricacies of all of these right now. Just hit show all, and then we know if all of them are plus CV, then we know we have a good bet. So don't worry about that right now. Kelly bankroll, this is just whatever your bankroll is. So if you have a $30,000 bankroll, if you have a $300 bankroll, $50 bankroll, whatever it is, you can put it in here. And then this Kelly multiplier, if you've heard the term Kelly criterion or Kelly criterion calculator, it essentially just tells you how much to bet so that you don't go broke, but you also optimize your profits. I would leave this at 0.25 or quarter Kelly. It's conservative enough while also allowing you to grow your bankroll steadily. So I wouldn't mess with that. Just leave that at 0.25 and then put in whatever your bankroll is. It will tell you what to bet whenever you have a plus CV bet. Of course, if we devig a market and we have a negative expected value bet, it's just not gonna tell you about anything because why would you bet anything that is negative expected value? All right, I'm gonna start things off really basic. We're just gonna devig this Celtics bet. We wanna bet the Celtics on FanDuel. We wanna figure out, okay, what are the true odds for that? Or at least what does FanDuel think are the true odds for that? So we're getting minus 106 on the Celtics for minus 3.5. And then the heat on the other side are plus 3.5 at minus 114. So all we need to do is go here and type in the leg of the bet that we are betting, which would be minus 106, and then slash, because this is now the other side of the bet, minus 114, and then final odds of minus 106, because that is the bet that we are getting on FanDuel, as shown here. Now we just hit calculate, and we can see that we have a negative, about negative 4.5% expected value bet. Fair value for this bet is plus 104. This is really basic DVIG, but it's demonstrates why using a tool like this is so important because the sports book charges a fee. We have to make sure that we're getting better than odds of plus 104, assuming that FanDuel is sharp in this market. I'm not necessarily saying they are, but if we're devigging FanDuel's odds, we'd want to be getting odds better than this if we wanted to make a plus expected value bet. Maybe we can find that on a different sports book, right? Maybe Hard Rock is offering plus 110 on the Celtics and then we can bet it on Hard Rock. Or maybe we have some sort of boost on FanDuel, right? Sometimes they offer a 25% boost and then we'll be able to overcome the no vig fair odds and the crazy ninja mike d vigor actually has kind of a nice tool here you can put in the boost rather than have to calculate it yourself so if we have a 25 percent boost and we're boosting up minus 106 we hit calculate again and now we have a plus 7.1 percent expected value bet because our boosted final odds are plus 118 fair value is still plus 104 so we know we have a great bet once we boost up those odds if you want to take full advantage of this tool, you will want to use some sort of odd screener. You don't necessarily need to pay for a fancy one, especially right away. You can just use a free one, especially if you're just evading kind of mainline markets like this Celtics bet. I literally just Googled odd screener and a bunch of these come up and a bunch of them are free. Some of them are free and then have certain premium paid services. But if you're looking at especially just like mainline markets like the Celtics, like an NBA, Pretty much all of these are going to work just fine. I'm not necessarily here to shill for one specific one because there's, you know, pluses and minuses to all of them. 
but you should be using an odd screener. It just makes things a lot easier. You don't just want to trust FanDuel to always have the perfect odds because they definitely don't. I just wanted to highlight that it is really easy to find odd screeners and you have really no excuse not to use one. Action Network has an odd screener where you can look at mainline odds. The maker of Crazy Ninja Mike D. Vigor also has Crazy Ninja odds where you can look up different um, odds. And here you can actually see like the different player props and first quarters and all this different stuff. So you really have no excuse not to use an odd screener. Make sure you're using an odd screener. And then also, if one of the odd screeners doesn't have the specific book that you're looking for, let's say you're trying to devig a mainline NFL bet, then you might want to go straight to Pinnacle. You can just go straight to Pinnacle. You don't need to use an odd screener for that. You can see, okay, what are the odds on Pinnacle? Just go straight to the book. So let's say we want to use this tool to devig a parlay. Let's say someone says, I really want to parlay the Celtics and the Nuggets to cover their spread. So Celtics minus 3.5. Nuggets plus 3.5. We can see final odds that we're getting here are plus 274. So rather than use FanDuel's own odds, I'd rather use Pinnacle here. Pinnacle's pretty sharp when it comes to NBA because they take massive bets on NBA and they don't limit sharp betters. So we can trust them to have pretty sharp odds. Doesn't mean they're always going to be perfect, but I'd rather use Pinnacle's odds to do this DVIG, try to figure out what the fair odds are. Pinnacle's totally free. You don't need to make an account or anything. Americans can't even bet on Pinnacle right now. The Celtics, we can see, are minus 3 for minus 11. Of course, it was 3.5 here, so now we need to get the minus 3.5 odds, which would be minus 101, minus 109 on the other side. And so since we are betting the Celtics minus 3.5, we're going to put minus 101 here and then slash minus 109. Because this is a parlay, we need to separate the two different legs of our parlay by a comma here. So we just hit comma, and then we need to find the Nuggets, which is plus 3.5 is what we're betting. So now we're just going to go to the Nuggets game and we're going to go to plus 3.5 so it's minus 117 plus 105 on the other side of course whichever side we are betting we need to have that first whether it's the over whether it's the under the side that we're betting needs to always be first so it's minus 117 plus 105. and now for the final odds we just need to put in the final odds that we're getting so the final odds that we're getting on FanDuel are plus 274 or whatever sports book we are betting this at so plus 274 now we hit calculate now we can see the fair odds for our bet. It's actually not that bad for a parlay. A lot of times your parlays are going to be worse than this, but we have a negative 3.6% expected value bet. So of course we wouldn't bet this, but maybe there's a 25% boost on FanDuel. And now we can see pretty clearly, oh, we have a great bet. We have a plus 14% edge. Maybe we could find something better if we line shop a little bit more, but we can see very clearly that we have a plus expected value bet. So to kind of break down all of the little things that we see here. You can see market juice. That just means the sportsbook fee. So in the first market, it is plus 2.4% VIG. In the second market, it is 2.7% VIG. That is very low, by the way. Pinnacle has very low VIG on their mainline odds. You won't see that in most of the American books. That's another reason we can kind of trust Pinnacle to be pretty sharp on these. They have low VIG. They don't limit betters to nearly the same limits that the American books do, and they don't ban sharp. So we can trust them to be pretty sharp. Anyway, here's the fair value for the first bet, which we already discussed. That's plus 104. For the second bet for the Nuggets, it is minus 117, so minus 111. So actually, you know, on FanDuel, you were getting a pretty nice price here. You were getting minus 108, so we were actually beating the Novig odds on the Nuggets bet. But the reason that this is negative before the boost is because we weren't getting good enough odds on the Celtics bet, which is at plus 104. Next to plus 104, you can see this percentage. This just means the win percentage. So the Celtics are going to cover this spread 49.1% of the time. The Nuggets are going to cover this spread 52.5% of the time. All American odds here have an implied probability. So anytime you see a bet at plus 104, the implied probability for that bet, once the odds are devigged, of course, is 49.1%. Boosted final odds. So this is the final odds that we are getting, of course, after that 25% boost. And then the fair value for the entire bet is 288, which again has implied odds. The implied odds of that bet are 25.8%. All of these terms down here, of course, EV just means expected value. That is the ROI of your bet, the expected ROI. It means if you were to bet these odds over and over again, where you're getting odds of 343, when the fair value is 288, you will expect to net 14% of your money. Of course, this bet itself is either going to win or it's going to lose. So you're either going to you know, win 3.4 times your money or you're going to lose all of it. But it's over the long term. If you were to bet at those odds, that is your expected return, which is 14%. Kelly Wager, this is telling me what to bet based on this $1,000 bankroll that we have here. And then it also tells me a unit sizing, which is just percentage of bankroll, um, based on full Kelly, half Kelly, and quarter Kelly. Of course, we're using quarter Kelly here. So notice how this 1.02 units 
is the exact same thing as $10.22 on the $1,000 bankroll. The last thing here is the free bet. FB equals, this means if you were to place a free bet at these odds, this is the expected conversion rate of this free bet. So this is 88.2% right now. Typically you wanna shoot for as high a free bet conversion as possible. So an 88% free bet conversion is certainly nice. Although in this example, it's a little bit weird because of course we have boosted odds. Typically you can't boost a free bet, but you understand the purpose. If this wasn't a boost, it would still give us our free bet percentage here. All the different methods have essentially the exact same results, but sometimes, like I said, this is gonna change pretty drastically if we're betting at higher odds. So I can just show you that real quick. So let's say we're betting at plus 300 odds. This is just a random example, minus 500. You're gonna see wildly different results here. You can see fair value here is 725, 813, 880. That's because it's slightly different calculations. Uh, additive and power, they take underdog bias into account. It basically means that the sports books will apply even more VIG to the side that's higher odds, such as like a home run hitter market. People are much more likely to bet on the guy to hit a home run than not hit a home run. And so sometimes the sports books will charge more VIG on the to hit a home run side. So you have to be aware of that. And things like additive and power methods help you take that underdog bias into account. One more time, remember, whatever we're devigging, it doesn't matter the order that it's shown in the sports book. The first thing that we put into the devigger, the first side, that is the side that we are betting. So if we wanted to bet the heat on the money line, plus 132, minus 156, the heat are gonna be first here, 132, minus 156, and then of course the final odds would be the heat because that is what we are betting. How about if we need to devig a multi-way market? If you've ever noticed some three-way markets, sometimes hockey has them. The main thing that they're in is soccer because you'll see this team to win, this team to win, and then a tie. We can do that here as well. I'll just use FanDuel again because, well, let me use Pinnacle. If I was gonna devig a soccer market, I would definitely use Pinnacle. Let's say we wanna bet this EPL match. We've got West Ham United versus Leeds United. You can see all the odds here. And we wanna bet West Ham. So we got 171, 269 on the draw and then leads to win is 158. So all we need to do, really simple, is we just put all three of these bets in here, or all three sides separated by slashes. The side that we are betting needs to be first. And then we can see the fair value for this bet. So we can see that this isn't a great bet, right? We have a negative 5% expected value, but it helps us get a good idea of what the true odds should be for West Ham to win. You can see again, the VIG is pretty low in this market since we took it from Pinnacle, 2.8% juice. Fair value for this bet is 178. So if we were able to find this bet somewhere, on DraftKings, on BetMGM, on Caesars, wherever, or plus 180, plus 190, we would know we have a pretty good bet because we're beating the no VIG fair value on those pinnacle odds. And of course, the order for this would just switch if we were gonna bet the draw. If we were gonna bet the draw, super easy. We just have 269 first, and then we would, you know, if we were gonna bet it on FanDuel, it'd be 260 here. Simple enough, we put 260 here, and now we can see the fair value for the draw, which would be 279. Devigging a multi-way market is really simple. Now you might see massive multi-way markets if you were gonna try to devig a NASCAR bet or a golf bet where there's a ton of different people who can win the same event and only one of them can win. It's actually not complicated to do at all to devig a golf market or a NASCAR market, but it just might take more time because you have a lot of entries. So if we wanted to figure out the true odds for this golf match, um, the tournament's still going on. So what the PGA Championship, I think the last day is tomorrow. See, Brooks Kepka is pretty heavily favored now relative to these other people, which is a bummer because I have bets on Scheffler, but we don't need to worry about that. You can just put in all of these odds with whatever we want to bet first. So let's say that we want to bet Brooks Kepka 129, then we just separate all these different ones by slashes. It's pretty nice that Pinnacle has this the field bet, which takes into account all the other betters. You know, some of these other sports books still let you bet like 50 of the other guys, which would take a lot longer to input. But on Pinnacle right now, because this tournament's been whittled down a little bit, it won't be so tough. So let me put those in real quick. So I got all the pinnacle odds inputted here. Of course, we got Brooks Kepka first. And let's just say that there's some sort of boost on some book. Brooks, Brooks Kepka to win for plus 145. So on Bet365, so on DraftKings, whatever. Now we can hit calculate here and we can see, okay, what are the fair odds for Brooks Kepka? And we can see that we have a lot of discrepancies here, but of course we wanna always be conservative. Make sure that we're only betting plus EV. And this is actually negative expected value to multiplicative. It's minus 1.4% expected value and so we probably wouldn't bet this which is surprising right because pinnacle is offering us 129 you would think 145 is a great value but because of the relatively high juice the relatively high vig in these multi-way markets um, sometimes you're not getting as good of a deal as you think you are that's why this tool is important because it can help us figure out what are the true odds of these bets 
and make sure that we're never getting you know screwed by the sports book when we think that we're getting a great price when we actually aren't because sometimes stuff gets boosted up and you think it's good and actually it's garbage let's use this on a real life example let's say we want to figure out this boost i'm on caesars we've got this premier league boost even though it's not all premier league but whatever it's lecce leads in stuttgart all to win for plus 1400 sounds pretty good plus 1400 pretty fat payout this is just a three leg parlay we just need three soccer teams to win pretty simple to figure out so now we're just on the other side of that west ham bet remember we were betting west ham before this time we're betting leads so now we just put in the same exact bets but now leads is first 158 because that's what we are betting one and then 269 it doesn't matter what order you put the other two legs in here by the way so if i wanted to put the draw right here i could have or west ham here it doesn't matter as long as the odds that we are betting come first and now we need a comma instead of a slash because now we are going on to a separate leg of our bet because now we're trying to figure out the odds for Lecce. I don't know why I started off with Leeds, but just because I was already on the Premier League. So Lecce, of course, is in Serie A, so now I need to find the Serie A betting here. You know, it could take a little bit of work um, to find all this stuff, but you'll kind of get the hang on where to look for stuff so it doesn't take so long. Using Control-F, by the way, if you're not a big fan of Control-F, I, uh, I would start using it. It makes your life a lot easier. Of course, here we would have found it easy anyway, but just typing stuff in on these different sports books to find what you're looking for. I think it's really helplful, so I highly recommend it. Lecce, plus 125, 218 on the draw, and then Spezia is 272. Of course, we're betting Lecce. Finally, we're getting Stuttgart to win. I don't even know what league Stuttgart is in, so I'm just going to Google it. Is that Germany? Is that the Bundesliga? First Division Germany, Bundesliga. Cool. Didn't know that. I probably should have known that. Germany, Bundesliga. So we're here. Again, I'm just using pinnacle odds. You would want to look at more ideally, but just for the purposes of this video. So we got stuck our first. So even though they're last in this list, that's who we put first in the D bigger. And that is essentially all the work that we need to do. Now we can just hit calculate here. And if we have a plus expected value bet to all these different methods, we know that we can hammer this. And if we have a negative expected value bet, well, then we might want to fade it. And we have a negative expected value bet. It's negative five to 6% to every single method which is kind of surprising, right? Because you're betting three different teams that are all favored in these soccer matches. It's only a three leg parlay for plus 1400 odds. It sounds pretty good. Like if I was kind of a casual better, I'd be like, hey, I actually, I even thought before I was diving in this, I was like, hey, that sounds like a pretty good boost. This is why this tool is really important because sometimes the sports books can give us very deceptively what looks like good boosts and good bets. And they're actually quite bad. Um, this is negative expected value if you were to bet at these odds all the time when the fair value is 6.2 percent you would be a losing better in the long term and obviously we don't want to be losing betters in the long term so that's why we use this tool hopefully that wasn't too confusing but those are the basics on how to use the crazy ninja mike sportsbook Vigor. so if you ever see a normal bet an uncorrelated parlay or a multi-way market you can devigor yourself now for sure you can always ask me for help Feel free to hit me up in the comments or DM me if you have any questions. I'm definitely always happy to answer them. If we wanted to devig a correlated parlay or one of these correlated boosts, it does become a little bit more complicated. If people are interested in that, let me know. And I'll definitely make a separate video on that because a lot of the boosts that I devig, there is some correlation because a lot of the, you know, FanDuel boosts and DraftKings boosts, it will have different players involved in the same game. And so we do have to factor in correlations such as Marcus Smart over five assists and Jason Tatum over 30 points those things have some correlation. And so we need to factor that in rather than just treating them like they're totally independent bets. If you got any questions, definitely hit me up. Hopefully you have another tool in your arsenal now that you can use to kind of get a one up on the sports book. The way to beat the sports books is to trust the sports books or at least certain sports books, right? If we trust that pinnacle odds are pretty sharp for NFL and EPL, then we can beat BetMGM when we see that they have odds discrepancies. And that's why this tool is really important. Or when they're giving us a boost, we can figure out whether it's actually a good boost or whether it's not. Any questions, definitely hit me up. Good luck on your bets tonight. Not that you need to sit your bet with an edge. Thanks.